I begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, praise be to Him, the Creator and the Sustainer. I begin in His name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I send my peace and my blessings upon Muhammad and his holy progeny. And I send my condolences to the Imam of my time, Sahib al Asri was Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance. On the martyrdom, on the tragic event of the attack and the killing of Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her. On the martyrdom of Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her. We continue where we left off in our previous episode. We spoke of the interaction between Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family, and Amir al Mu'mineen as they were walking through the gardens with his companions. And he told him as he began to cry, as his tears began to flow, my prophets, peace be upon him. He told Ali ibn Abi Talib, there is hatred and malice in the hearts of some in my ummah. They will not unveil these feelings until after I pass away. We will continue discussing the prophecies of Rasulullah, peace be upon him, and his holy family concerning the malice, concerning the hatred that Quraysh had placed forth on his holy household. The following hadith can be found in Al-Manaqib of Al-Khawarizmi, page 62. And Al-Allam Al-Majlisi recorded in his Bihar, volume 27, page 45. Listen to the words. It might be similar to the previous hadith, but it is good that we repeat. And there is a different context to this hadith. O oh, Ali, the enmity and malice in their hearts towards you will be unveiled after my death. Those are the ones whom Allah curses and the people curse them too. وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ الْلَاعِنُونَ Surah Al-Baqarah verse 159. Those, the ones that have hatred towards you, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and enmity towards you, those hypocrites from my ummah, are the ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed and the ones that the people curse. Curse in the meaning that may Allah remove His mercy from them. Then He says, after he begins to cry, <clears throat> my Prophet, peace be upon him and his holy family, begins to cry and speak to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali, Ali tells Rasulullah, he tells him, Ya Rasulullah, why is it that you cry? Seeing the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his family crying, breaks the heart of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib tells him, the archangel Jibra'il has informed me that they will oppress him, oppress Ali ibn Abi Talib, deny him his rights, fight him, they will kill him, and after his passing, oppress his children and kill them too. Ya Ummata Muhammad, O nation of Muhammad, what have you done to the household of the Prophet? Like we said before, you listened and you enacted the commands and the instructions of Rasulullah with the Christians and the Jews, Ahlul Dhimmah, and you killed the closest family of Muhammad. You murdered the lady in which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam used to come to her house and ask permission to enter. 
he would stand in the door of Fatima to Zahra and read Ayatul Tadhir and say, May Allah purify you, O people of the household, through purification. You murdered the Lady of Light in which Rasulullah Khatimul Anbiya wal Mursaleen, the final messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his holy family, would ask permission from Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her, to enter the house. You murdered this lady? Did you ask for her permission? When you forced the door on her and kicked her stomach? And took the metal end of the sword? And slashed her? And slapped her on the face? And left a wound on her body? Did you take care of the family of Muhammad? The next hadith here. <clears throat> the next hadith will show you the hypocrisy of Quraysh. The hadith is found in Taqrib al Mu'arif of a Shaykh Abu Salah al Halabi, Radwan Allah Ta'ala Alay. By Al Qasim ibn Jundab, he said, From Anas ibn Malik, from Anas. Anas says, Ali alayhi salam got very sick and his body became weak. The Prophet had entered upon Ali ibn Abi Talib and I was sitting by the head of Ali ibn Abi Talib. I moved and he sat by the head of Ali ibn Abi Talib and he began to greet him and condole him. Abu Bakr and Umar were sitting in the majlis. Abu Bakr and Umar were sitting in the majlis Abu Bakr winked at, at Umar ibn al-Khattab. With his eyes, he looked towards Umar, saying, talk to Rasulullah. Speak to Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umar got up and listened to these disgusting words. No respect to Rasulullah, no respect to Amir al-Mu'mineen. This is a fact. This is a fact. This is the character of Umar ibn al-Khattab. It's not something new that we're narrating to you. Read his biography. Read his biography and you will see. You will see his character. He said, O Messenger of Allah, you have entrusted, promised us that this man will have authority. Yet I do not see this happening anytime soon. If he passes away, whom or who will take his place? Who will take his place? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not respond to Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umar and Abu Bakr repeated their actions three times. Until Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family, responded. He said, This man will not die from this sickness. He will not die until you fill him with anger, betrayal and oppression. But by Allah, you will see Ali ibn Abi Talib patient. He said, you too. He will not die because of the sickness. He will die because you, you too, will instill him with betrayal and oppression and anger. This report is found in the Khasa'is of a Siyuti, volume 2, page 124. Al Mustadrak, volume 3, page 139. And as I said, in Taqrib al Mu'arif as well, it can be found in Tariq Dimashq, volume 18, page 33. In Kitab Sulaym ibn Qays al Hilali, this Mu'tabar reliable book that we have. This historical book that we have, there is an addition. The addition is the following. After Rasulullah got up, he said the same words. Then he said, you will see him patient and obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
he will not die until he faces corruption and evil from you too. From you, Ibn Abi Quhafab and Ibn Suhaq. He will be killed and he will die as a martyr. This is the kalam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to these two disrespectful people. You see the way they spoke to Rasulullah? And how is Amir al-Mu'mineen going to die? A martyr, a patient one too. Quraysh, Quraysh has a problem with Banu Hashim from a while back. Quraysh has a problem with the message of Islam. Rasulullah took them from darkness into light. He took them from the time of Jahiliya to the time of enlightenment. He gave rights to women. Islam brought forth equality. Islam brought forth laws that Quraysh disgusted and did not like. Of course, Quraysh, how else are they going to destroy Islam? They used the excuse of the testimony of Islam. They did the shahada, they wore the attire of Islam, they said to the people, we are Muslims. And you see, after the martyrdom of Rasulullah, they left the body of Rasulullah. They did not do the takfeen and the funeral processions of the body of Rasulullah. And they went and they appointed themselves a leader, as they say through democratic votes. Tell me, a moral, rational man, does he accept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves the ummah with no leader and no divine successful leader and lets them vote democratically for a human lets them vote democratically to appoint a khalifa the rational human being does not accept this of course this is another discussion we will continue Looking at the siyaq of this hadith, so insha'Allah we will complete the hadith. This section here will be the khitam of this hadith. God willing, insha'Allah. In the report in the book of Sulaym, I will read to you the nas of Rasulullah. Listen to these words. Hatta you know how much oppression Ahl al Bayt faced from Quraysh and how patient Amir al Mu'mineen was. The greatest characteristic of, you, of Amir al-Mu'mineen is not his courage, but it is his patience. O oh, Ali, after me, you will see intense betrayal and oppression from Quraysh. If you find people to aid you, then fight them. If you do not, put down your weapon and do not spill blood and do not lead yourself towards destruction. You are to me as Harun is to Musa. Follow Harun's footsteps and remember when his community thought he was weak and wanted to kill him. Hence, be patient over this oppression you are to face from Quraysh. For you are like me, like Harun was to Musa. Like Harun was to Musa. And they are like the ones who follow the Samari. Now a point might be asked here. Is Amir al-Mu'mineen weak? Can he not face them alone? This is because of Allah's divine wisdom first. Secondly, there is a hadith by Rasulullah which states that the method of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the example of Ali ibn Abi Talib is like the Kaaba. The method of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the example of Ali ibn Abi Talib is like the Kaaba. We go to the Kaaba. The Kaaba does not come to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test the ummah. He wants to see, will they come to Ali ibn Abi Talib? Only when they come to Ali ibn Abi Talib, when they want to aid Ali ibn Abi Talib, when they want to have a divine recipient of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth, that is when Ali can fight them. If not, Ali, sit down, put down your weapon, and do not let this ummah go into disunity. Because if anything happens right now, it will affect my Shia after. Now listen, 
listen to this point right here. He says, O oh Ali, Allah has decreed to place this unity and opposition in this ummah, in this nation. If Allah wanted, He would unite them all on guidance until even two people from His creation would not quarrel in any of His matters. If Allah wanted, He would send His punishment sooner and withdraw His bounties until His oppressors would be proven at fault and the truth would be known with whom it is. But He has made this he has made this world a place for trials and tests and makes the hereafter a never-ending abode. He may recompense those who do evil with the penalty of what they have done and recompense those who do good with the best reward. Surah An-Najm verse 13. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Ali ibn Abi Talib if Ya Ali, if Allah wanted, He could have easily united the Ummah that there would not be khilaf between two. And He caused this unity and oppression in this Ummah. He caused this unity, sorry, and confusion so that He may test the Ibad. If Allah does not test us, then what is the point of being here? This would be against the Hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where would morality go? Where would ethics go? Hence, it is divine test for the ummah. The example of Ali is like the Kaaba. We want people to come to Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Kaaba does not go to the people. Ali tries, yet, the Ummah does not want Ali ibn Abi Talib. Do you now see the oppression that Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, faced from this Ummah? Did you not see the oppression that Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her, faced from this Ummah? This is the Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them. Oppressed. Since the martyrdom of Muhammad, everybody turned back on their heels. They rejected the appointed leader of Allah and they chose themselves a new leader. Insha'Allah in our next episode, we will begin to tell you the prophecies that Rasulullah foretold of Ahlul Bayt concerning the affliction that they will face from this Ummah. Peace be upon you, my lady Fatima. And may Allah hasten the reappearance of my master, Imam al Mahdi al Muntadar, Ajalallah ta'ala farajahu al Sharif. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.